Hey everyone, Mr. Happy here, and welcome to Mondays with Mr. Happy, aka Mr. Happy Mondays, the weekly Q&A show where you ask me questions and I answer them. It has been a hell of a week, ladies and gentlemen. Ever since I woke up early for Blue Mage stuff on Tuesday, I've actually felt kind of sick all week. You know, it's the first time I've done like one of those odd sleep schedules and not felt like good. <laughs> I actually had to stop streaming today at like 9.30 in the morning because I felt like I was going to vomit. I went and passed out for like five hours after that. I'm feeling much better but I have been recording for the last two hours straight, drinking orange juice in between takes. And yes, this is a gallon of orange juice. And yes, I do have it on my on my desk. So I may occasionally need to take a swig from that as well. But it has been great. I'm working on a ton of Blue Mage videos as well as uh, the remaining Versus videos. I've got a lot on my plate right now. But finally, for the rest of December, it looks like I'll have plenty of time to actually work on YouTube videos. So I'm actually really excited for that. I've got two patreon videos that i recorded two weeks ago that i'm now going to re-record because i probably won't be happy with them when i go to actually edit them and post them so uh yeah there's that so i'm in a pretty good mood finished the more bowl mount with blue mage finished uh, epic of alexander actually this week as well too so it's just been a great week so i'm in a really positive mood and hoping to pass that positivity off to all of you who enjoy my channel and i very much appreciate it uh i say it all the time but it must feel like oh he just says it no like i, I mean it a lot like I, it's been a very very humbling last couple of weeks i'll say for myself personally so thank you uh also of course thank you to our patrons who have been supporting the channel, even though I don't do a whole lot with the Patreon, and it's just there to support the YouTube channel. Um, it may become more of a necessity, depending on the way that the whole COPPA thing plays out next month. Uh, we don't know how that's actually going to look when it comes to YouTube content next month, so there's a little bit of fear in everyone's hearts that anything video game related is going to be kind of on the radar of, of, COPPA's, uh, of COPPA's potential reach. So we'll see. I'll keep you guys up to date if anything is going to be changing, if anything is going to be happening with that. But patrons, you guys have been rocking it regardless of the ups and the downs. Our patrons of Darkness as well, Kernai, Oni, and Kuja Cross on Genova. Always great to have all of you. Always great to have your support. And thank you so much for everyone, both patron and otherwise, for supporting the channel over the last several years. Anyway, with that, let's get to the questions because I would like to go eat dinner. All right, first question. Hashtag Mr. Happy Mondays. Hi, how are you? Hello. I'm doing just fine now that I've had a five-hour nap. Uh, more of a proposition than a question, but will you unlock the aesthetician for an anniversary of your channel? Man, on one hand, it would be a pretty monumental thing for me to actually unlock the aesthetician on my main, because I have it on my alt, but I won't unlock it on my main. On the other hand, what a streak to break. I'm gonna say no. I will not unlock the aesthetician on my main. I will take pride in knowing that I have it on my alt and that my main has not yet had the pleasure. Next one, hashtag Mr. Happy Mondays. Good morning, Haps. How you doing? I'm doing good. You're doing good. I'm doing good. You're doing good. I'm doing good. You're doing good. I'm doing good. Oh, yeah, my question. Yeah, I got lost in it, too. I was, it's By the way, it's you doing I. See, that's that's the way we do it in Jersey. All right. Crit versus direct hit. I've heard a huge amount of people saying it is better to do direct hit until you get high enough crit for it to matter. The question is, what truth is in this kind of talk? What should we meld, crit or direct hit? I'm a paladin main. I don't know if that makes a difference. So it does, specifically among the tanks, Warrior has slightly different melds because direct hit is a much lower value on them. But the answer to this question, I'm not qualified to answer it entirely because I don't know the exact numbers and the exact breakpoints. But the answer, that is a generalization that is true. When your crit can get approximately over 3,000, that's when it starts to really outscale direct hit. And because we can already hit that threshold as item level increases through the rest of the expansion, it only becomes more and more true. The real answer is a little bit more specific because there's things like skill speed tiers, crit tiers, and direct hit tiers to keep in mind. The way Final Fantasy XIV works is you need a certain number of a substat in order to gain a full percentage of effectiveness out of it. I don't know those exact numbers off the top of my head, but there are times where if you do know those numbers and you do know the breakpoints, it's you want to have a certain amount of those stats as a minimum or it can be more beneficial to gain more direct hit over critical hit if it will send you up a tier, whereas the critical hit would not. Um, I'm going to use completely, these numbers are not real. These are not good examples. If you want good examples of these numbers, please go to the Discord that is called The Balance. You can find a link to it on the Final Fantasy XIV Reddit uh, in one of their uh, resource links. But let's say that every 50 crit was a crit tier. 
and every 50 direct hit was a tier. Again, these are just these are these are bullshit numbers. Just just bear with me here. Um, and let's say that uh, you have a piece of gear that can give you 40 crit. Now that's good, but it doesn't give you enough crit to actually go up to the next tier of critical hit rate. Now let's say another piece has 40 direct hit, but that 40 direct hit will make you go up a direct hit tier. So now you're weighing the 40 crit that's not gonna increase your critical hit rate because it's not reaching the next tier. Although I do think they operate on like micro tiers as well, but let's, this is this is the generally accepted way that it's, it's calculated. Um, so you have the 40 crit that on paper people say, oh, that's better, but doesn't actually increase your critical hit chance by that 1% threshold. But the 40 direct hit does, then the direct hit comes out ahead. It requires a very deep knowledge of the individual tiers and what your job actually looks like when it's in its app, when it has its absolute best stats. Generally, most people get a best list and they just forget it from there because it's such, it's such a minute difference that odds are you're not going to want to dive into it on such a level. But if you are interested, get those numbers from the balance and look at it and calculate it from there. Next question. Hey, Haps, fellow Gilgamesh player and a fellow S rank spawner. I haven't helped with S rank spawnings in probably about two and a half months, I want to say. I think I helped with the next tab not too long ago, actually, but that guy's an easy one. Anyway, uh, welcome. Uh, what keeps you motivated to play besides the uh, besides obvious that it's your job? I get so burnt out by the repetitive repetitiveness of the game. Cheers. I am one who feels like when you are not having fun, you should walk away from it. When I don't feel motivated to play, I don't. Believe it or not, despite what I do for a living, I don't play, or I play less. My biggest thing for the past several months when I'm not doing raiding, or there's not a new content drop like Blue Mage, or there's nothing like that, I'll play two, three hours, maybe a little bit longer, and then I'll go play Dauntless, or like Star Ocean First Departure R came out, not, excuse me, not long ago. Darksiders Genesis came out not long ago. Uh, Mad Moxie's uh, Heist is coming out soon with Borderlands 3. Ring Fit Adventure has been a big thing for me in the afternoons. The answer is you just take a step away. I know it seems like weird advice because a lot of us grew up in an age of MMOs where if you stepped away, you got mad fear of missing out. That just doesn't happen in 14. There's that pressure to keep playing should never be there because the game by design does not try to enforce it. So don't put it on yourself. Just look elsewhere and play some other stuff until something you do want to do pops up in the game. Even Yoshi P tells people to uh, to do this. And I know it seems like it's counter it's counter uh, intuitive to the way you want to, but that's my recommendation. Next one, hashtag Mr. Happy Mondays. How you doing, my guy? I'm doing I. You doing I? I'm doing I. I heard you say you like games like Stardew Valley. I do. I don't ever get to make videos on them or play them for content very often, but I love. I call them. I call them life management games or life management simulators. I love. I like those kind of things. Um, I'm a fan of Sims. I'm a fan of Stardew. I'm a fan of Animal Crossing, which I will be playing next year. It's just not something that comes through on my channel very often. Um, are you a fan of the Harvest Moon series? So I am a passive fan. I never owned the Harvest Moon games growing up because I didn't have any means of procuring them myself. I didn't know they existed for the long longest time and by the time I got older I was doing stuff that I didn't have time to invest into something like Harvest Moon so I cons consider me I'm a fan from afar uh where I like the style of game but I never had the pleasure of like sitting down and going through it um do you think we'll ever see another Harvest Moon game I won't you know what we've seen so many remakes remasters you know revived series I won't say no but my hope is low for Harvest Moon in particular, just because it has really fallen into obscurity. There's so many other titles and types of games that come out nowadays that it would take, it would take like a personal project to get something like Harvest Moon that is like a, like a legit legitimate sequel out. It would take a very dedicated set of people. And while I know that set of people exist, whether or not they would want to invest it into that specific IP, I'm not entirely convinced. I will be streaming Animal Crossing when it comes out in March after I'm done with Final Fantasy VII Remake, though. Next one, hashtag Mr. Happy Mondays. Hey there, happy. How you doing? I'm doing I. You doing I? I'm doing orange juice. My question is, did we ever get proper names for primal influence people other than Ifrit's Tempered or Leviathan's Drown? If so, though, whose influence and what are they? So I actually am sure there are other names for it. We've dived into the, uh, I guess, physiology and the magic or the, I guess, the source of what causes a tempering, especially in recent times. But Ifrits aren't specifically the tempered. 
tempering is the overall act of any primal forcing influence upon uh, other living creatures to be its obsessive uh, like cultists in a sense, its followers. Um, so while Leviathans may have a special title in the name of the Drowned, um, and I'm sure there are other names that exist for other primals, um, we mostly just say someone is tempered uh if they have fallen under the influence of the primal because it's just a universal term that we can use for anything next one hashtag mr happy mondays hey mr happy one question here hello uh do you think there's something lost in translation when square enix called blue mage a solo job and if so what do you think that was meant it seems like the design on blue goes against being alone so i've had this discussion a lot as someone who has done eight man raids with blue mage i do plan on finishing up the ex primals with it you know such as thornton for the title i do think somewhere it was it, that idea was left because it is very openly encouraged to be used in parties, in this patch especially. It feels like in the initial patch, there was a little bit of truth to it. The Mass Carnival in particular is solo. I mean, that's it. And that is a Blue Mage exclusive content. No other job can take part in it. Whereas the Blue Mage log and the spell learning, it's content that every other job can do. But the Blue Mage has a unique reason to be doing it. Um, and of course, you can't do General Duty Finder, you have to have pre-made parties, you can't even solo Palace of the Dead because you can't go in there, which was, for me, still the biggest disappointment if I have the opportunity to ask Yoshi P a question in the next several months at an event or you know, in a, an interview, whatever, that is going to be what I ask is about Palace of the Dead. I feel like from its incorporation to its latest implementation that that mentality changed. I do not think they feel it is a solo job anymore. I will say, however, that the most recent update to Blue Mage has better enforced Blue Mage's op -ness, which sounds like penis, but it's OP. Never mind. Anyway, uh, because the stuff they can do in dungeons and even the eight-man raids is absurd. How many things they can ignore, instantly kill. And some people call it cheese. I just call it Blue Mage because that's all it is. So I think they got, I think they've fallen out of touch with the solo aspect of it, but they've reinforced other positive aspects of it. The level 70 update is going to be a big eye watcher because now we already expect to be told to do 04, 08, and 012 Savage. We know there's going to be no more Blue Mage logs. We know there's going to be more carnivals, but there's still unanswered questions about the solo aspect that we were initially sold on. And we will not find out anything else about that for quite some time. So if I have the opportunity to ask Yoshi P, I will ask him about Solo. I will ask him about Palace of the Dead. And uh, I hope to do that sometime in the first few months of the next year. Because I'd like and I'd like to know. I just, I'm, it's, it's heavy on my mind right now. All right, next question. Hashtag Mr. Space. Happy Mondays. <laughs> Hi, Mr. Happy. Hello. A news-related thing. I've been watching the live letter and the lodestone for something regarding the data mining-related situation that emerged after the world first. And although they were very quick to track down and ban at least some of the death threat targets, certain data miners, we haven't heard about any penalties to the people slinging the threats, or at least that is my impression. Have you seen any mention of it yet? So this is going to be a little bit of a personal topic for me, not because of the data mining section, but because of uh, the topic of death threats and anonymous threats. And that that's kind of the point. Most of the threats that come out against people, whether it be video game related or in social media, unfortunately they're done with throwaway accounts and Square Enix isn't gonna isn't working to like backwards trace IPs and stuff like that through throwaway Twitter accounts that get deleted two hours after to deleted or banned two hours after they're made. Um, at that point it becomes is does Twitter do anything to try and do that to track down law enforcement? And I don't ever expect them to, because it's just it's a large corporation that I don't have that kind of faith in. So they can ban the death threat targets to remove some of the information, to encourage them to stop the information flow. And in a way it is to protect those individuals. Uh, it's, it's just, we want justice on the other side. It's just not a realistic thing, unfortunately, on the internet, unless somebody is directly making threats on their personal account and that personal account can be tied to an in-game account then it's it's just hard to do that. In fact, this is one of the first times we've ever seen Square Enix exercise action 
against somebody for doing things that are not in the game directly, like literally looking at their social media, looking like tracking down where the information sources are and finding that person's real character. We've never seen anything like that outside of people linking not safe for work images on their lodestone, uh, which then at least is still taking place on one of their official resources and they have a little bit more reach for something like that. So it's, uh, it's a hell of a situation, man. Obviously for years I've dealt with threats and harassment and stuff and at some point I just kind of had to accept that it was kind of my life at that point. I don't want these other people to have to go through that kind of stuff and have to go through it any more than they did already. I just hope that with a situation behind with maybe the, the lack of flow of that kind of information coming out in the future, uh, especially through the sources people were using previously, such as the uh, the Reddit Discord and uh, people's individual Twitter account. I just, I just don't want anyone else to have to deal with it. And it sucks that this was the way it was solved. This was the way it was settled. Um, but I wouldn't expect to hear anyone who actually made any threats to be banned. It's just, it's probably not gonna happen just because it's really hard to do tracking down for stuff like that. Anyway, moving on to the next question. Hashtag Miss Happy Mondays. How are you? I'm doing all right. Hope you're having a great day. First time question. Welcome. Do you think Final Fantasy XIV will ever incorporate the Crystal Warriors slash slash, ah, slash Archangels or angles here from Eleven? And if so, how do you think they would adjust them to fit the game's classes, game tri trial raid main scenario? So maybe not the answer you're looking for. But if you have not done or paid attention to the job quests or the role quests in Shadowbringers. It might be the closest you get. That's 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 the best answer I'm gonna think to give. I don't think they'll ever. Just, I don't think they'll ever do Archangels like directly from Final Fantasy XI. Just I just don't think they will. They could. I just don't think they will. Next question. Hey, Mr. Happy, you doing I? Right? I'm doing I right too. I'm doing I. Right. Good to hear you doing I. Right. Cause you answered. First time askers have a bonus of any of a glowing chest piece that keeps you warm. So you're struggling with the cold on your last occurrence. Yeah, I just I think I was already sick, and then trying to do the sleep schedule for the Blue Mage thing made me sick for the rest of the week, especially today. But after that five hour nap today, I felt so good. My question should give you an idea of how long I've been following you. What happened to that gun blade you used to have in the background when you were still living in New Jersey? I know you've been here a bit, but welcome to the Bay Area. You're in my hood, kid. Thank you. Thank you for the welcome. So that Gunblade uh, was a replica, a fully steel one with uh, with a trigger that could actually be pulled. Obviously, the way Gunblades work, there's there's you're only supposed to be loading it in to cause a vibration. So that it's not really functional, but it is nice that the trigger could be pulled and it felt like a very real thing to have. Um, the answer to so what happened to it. I moved 3,000 miles, and the last thing I wanted to try to move via a package was a giant, fully functional sword, because yes, it was sharp, and yes, it was a blade, and I'm not trying to send that through the mail, so I left it back in New Jersey, and I told my family, you can do whatever you want with it. If you want to try to sell it, or throw it out, whatever it is you do, I'm not sending that gun blade 3,000 miles just to hang it on the back of a wall or something like that. Uh, I am not trying to deal with that that stress or that that problem it's just not something that i want to do next one hashtag mr happy mondays big aloha to you and aloha yeah it's weird when i say aloha to my cat and i'm calling him by name and not just saying hello but aloha to you as well how would you like ifrit gerudo ramu and shiva to be reiterated in e5 through 8 and 9 to 12 on the savage difficulty i don't really have any personal wish list other than shiva's actually my highest hope um because we know that the thunder planes and ramu are likely going to be a boss in a setting um, as of the most recent live letter. Um, there is, for me, the personal hope that there will uh, th there will be some sort of mix of like a Centaurian Ramu. Because you gotta remember, Ramu from the Ixals is uh, largely believed to be their iteration or their interpretation of Ralgar, um, who is the Alamegan's god, or the uh, one of the 12 that the Alamegans praise the most. So there's a hope that there's like this this sort of jacked bearded top half of like the Centaurian body, like a like a like a Ralgar slash Ramu Ixion hybrid. That's kind of what my hope is. Um, but the only other real hope is the Isail Iceheart uh, to be a very. I expect it to be a very emotional encounter, uh, playing with the uh with dragon song kind of as a, a means of understanding it trace felger and uh shiva and Iceheart and all that uh there's there's a lot of emotions that could go into that especially because it's derived from the memories of the warrior of light who had this connection with isail back during heaven's word so that's really where my big hope is and i hope that that encounter is e8 savage i pray that shiva specifically 
is E8 Savage, and that they do that encounter mad justice. All right, next one, hashtag Mr. Every Mondays, hashtag Mr. Mayor Mondays, hashtag one question that might depress me. <laughs> now I'm scared to read it. Uh, hey, uh, you got an exclamation mark. It's fine. Hey, Haps, how you doing? I'm doing all right. You doing all right? I'm doing all right. Let's get straight to the question that's been bugging me for weeks now. How does time pass in the Final Fantasy XIV universe? Is it like a bubble that keeps comprising events together, or do the Scions actually age? A bit of context. I'm someone who finds fun in thinking about who is the best girl given the piece of media, and 14 is not an exception. Uh, I am probably going to just leave the rest of that out because I don't know that I want to even remotely begin to read the rest of that because I've read some really weird things on the internet and uh, I I don't want to read it. So I'm just not going to. Uh, how do, how, so let's get to the question. How does time pass in the 14 universe? So there's no confirmed way of interpreting it. It's very much dependent on the way the actual story itself gives in to time passing. A big example is the amount of time that passed on the first from the time that the first person was sent there from uh, our Scions to when we actually go. We know that it's been five years for some characters, two years for some characters, three years for some characters. So it's all over the place because of the flow of time um, between their travel point and when they actually were retrieved there is very, very different because of the uh, ethereal imbalance that takes place there. So um, that doesn't really answer the question, but within our uh, world, there's a couple of theories. There is the bubble theory that there's like a, a, like a one to two year bubble of events that expands outward. So like technically events could be like a certain distance apart, but they're all trying to fit like within this year and then just kind of stretches out events like further back and further forward. Um, there's also just sometimes there's passing time between individual patches. Uh, for, a big example is Shadowbringers. This is actually a really great way of quantifying it. So the, I remember the last time we had like a set how many, how long has it been between these events? Uh, I guess explanation is that it's about a month between 2.55 and the and the beginning of 3.0. Um, but then when we go to Shadowbringers, because of the flow of time is so different, we are literally only gone for like five minutes on the source uh, throughout the events of Shadowbringers. As much as long as it may have been on the first, I, I don't think we have a set answer on that, but on the source, they're like, oh, you're back? Okay, that's you were gone for like five minutes, but that's fine. So uh, yeah, it's, it's a big question that I'm not really giving you an answer to, I'm just giving you examples of uh, how people have chosen to interpret it. Next one, hashtag Mr. Happy Mondays. Uh, hello to you too, by the way. Uh, what do you think of PSO2 and do you think you might hop on when the NA release hits? I'll probably hop on when the NA release hits, but I personally don't have that much excitement over PSO2. It's just, it's kind of too late. Anyone who really wanted to play PSO2 already downloaded an English patch and has been playing it on the Japanese servers. And they'll no doubt play the NA release as well. But it, I stopped being excited after like, what was it, 2013 they released the trailer. I was like, yeah, it's coming to the West. It's going to be like seven years by the time it actually hits the West. I don't, it's, I can't be asked to care anymore, really. I'll do it. I'll play it. It's, I'll have fun. But I don't really care if it does well or not in the West. It's so late. Next question. Hashtag Mr. Happy Mondays. One-ish question. Just one-ish. Kind of one question. I don't know if it tips above or below, but we'll see. First time asker. Long time viewer. Well, welcome. Hey, Haps. How you doing? There's the hello I'm always looking for. Not sure if this has been asked in general, but hopefully not. I've noticed a lot of your level 60 extreme primal solos, and I was wondering if you thought the level 70 normal mode raids could be soloed. I mean, more of the Delta Scape raids than Sigma and Omega. Um, I've tried in the past trying to queue for them individually for Chloe books, uh, and it can be a bit iffy on EU. And waiting in the party finder can be just as boring. Sometimes it just seems easier to solo them than wait. I managed to solo each of the level 50 EXs as level 70 tanks and currently leveling the others to 80 to try the level 60 raids. So I'm fairly used to having a solo, just wanted someone who probably has a bit more experience in raiding solo overall to confirm my suspicion. So I have not given any serious attempts to trying to solo the level 70 normal modes. I can tell you that as long as an encounter doesn't have something that is 100% instant kill, there's always some possibility of it being soloable. It's just a matter of what item level ends up being needed. Now, I have not tried anything Delta Escape related, but thinking back to the fight, I don't see other, th I don't see why alt Roy couldn't be soloed. Um, X-Death? I don't see, other than just sheer damage, I don't see why X-Death couldn't be soloed. 
Yeah, I don't really, I don't think there's any good reason as to why you couldn't solo. I think Halicarnassus gets a little bit rough because of the final, final phase with the, the you can't do, you, I mean, you can't do the panels. Like, you can only do one of the four panels, which means you're guaranteed failing three panels. So I don't know how bad that is to deal with. So that's a big question there. And then what's two? Catastrophe? Yeah, I don't see why catastrophe would be a problem to solo. It's just I think it's just a matter of item level scaling. For and by the way, again, I'm only answering for anyone who didn't pay attention. The normal modes. I'm not talking about the savages, which are probably a good bit more difficult to actually deal with and are either going to require another expansion or way more level or won't be possible ever. One of the one of the three possibilities. Um, I can give it a shot. I still have to do um some of the remaining level 60 savages also. Um, the remaining soloable level 60 savages should be A6, A8. A8 is a maybe. I still am not unconvinced A8 savage can be soloed. It's just that by the time we can, it's because we can burst down the blaster mirage fast enough. And I don't want to try it as a tank other than Paladin and try and do it myself right now. So I'm waiting till Paladin has the item level to actually burst down the Blaster Mirage before it tethers with... Or burst down the Blaster before the Blaster Mirage tethers to it. Um, so that's going to be the big determining factor for me, at the very least. Um, so A8, I'm unconvinced. Um, Gavel's a big question, but if there's only one person, maybe Gavel is easier to... to I don't know. I don't know what Gavel's going to look like with one person. Uh, and then A... Nine might be possible with a little more item level. A10 is 100% possible with more item level. A11 is 100% possible, and A12 is, I think, impossible. I think as soon, I think if you have nobody outside during the time gate phase, you're you're done. I don't think there's a way to do it. But I could be wrong. I'll just have to give it a try. I have more item level. That's what it's gonna take. It's gonna take more item level at this point because the echo ain't doing enough for those fights. For yours though, I can give it a shot and find out. Next question: Hashtag Mr. Happy Mondays. Hi, how you doing? I'm doing I. Right. You doing I? Right? I'm doing I. Right. With blue update out, decided to go and finish off my log that I slacked on from before. And I was wondering what are some of the optimal moves to get for blue and use while running it. So blue mage actually needs a metric ton of its skills in order to be like kind of well-rounded. It's why I generally recommend everybody just try to learn every spell, especially with the increased spell rates. There's almost every spell has some reason for you to use it. It's just a matter of whether you actually meet that situation. Like like reflux is uh, reflux is a heavy that can't be resisted. Sounds like it doesn't really matter that much, but it is really it's good to have in a few very select scenarios like turn 5 uh, or anything where you want to actually be able to kite the enemies, even just dungeons to slow down the trash as it's running behind the tank. Um there's things like uh there's things like Perpetual Ray, which you don't really need for anything, but it's good to have as a chain stun on certain fights or uh, as a good combo with Sharpened Knife if you actually have it set correctly. There's there's so many... It's hard for me to really say there's like one... Ethereal Mimicry you should get as soon as possible, but that's not an overworld spell. For overworld spells, Thousand Needles is the most important from 1 to 50. You want to have Mighty Guard and White Wind as soon as you can, but those you get from learning other spells. Missile... Doom, Tail Screw, or Level 5 Death are all phenomenal to have, uh, especially Level 5 Death if you are on anything that has a multiple level 5 that isn't immune to it. All the Primal spells are amazing. Um, Palm Cure, Exuviation, and Gobskin are all really good. Diamondback is a must from Stone Vigil Hard Mode or uh, Steps of Faith Normal. And, man, I'm just trying to even remember. Like, there's so many that I just got done writing a bunch of recommendations too. But I ended up recommending so many different ones that I was just like, is it, it's really hard for me to only recommend, like, Off Guard and Peculiar Light, White Wind, Magic Hammer, uh, Devour. Like, they're all so good. There's so many good spells. Sharpened Knife is really, really good for uh, just as a general DPS one. The look is, you know, a tank mimicry ability cact guard can be has a lot of really solid uses like moon flute is from doing carnival stuff like, and then the rays is from doing 30 car learn everything <laughs> that's the point if you're gonna do blue mage make the effort to like pick up some basic stuff but then just go down the list and just try to learn everything next question hashtag mr happy mondays hey hap keep putting out solid content really appreciate it glad you like it thank you comment and two questions about Sokin's music which he is creeping up to uematsu stats i don't think here's the thing about that I, I don't really like when people say that because 
people hold like certain the people who appreciate artists obviously they hold different artists to different standards and different like pedestals and whatnot i don't ever want to think of soken as approaching uemetsu or it's just even comparing soken is soken for me you know i i don't i don't think it's worth comparing him as a composer to uemetsu because they're just not quite the same you know they're they're just they're very very different types of composers and i really appreciate them each for their unique per, uh, personalities and uh, performances we have been spoiled with beautiful themes by soken the mushroomy was my favorite xiv piece of music until way to the world which by the way soken did not work on uh that was the original composer from near just an awe i can't get it out of my head two questions which iteration of the game do you think has the strongest music 1.0 through shadowbringers and what is your favorite soken piece in the entire 14 repertoire um i think that's really tough um because Stormblood unfortunately loses a lot of points because I think Stormblood, <clears throat> I think the lay motifs and the amount of themes that were just remixes of old Final Fantasy themes takes back a lot from me like getting to appreciate Soken. Like yes, you have your Biakos and your your Serus and like you have your dungeon boss themes. Those are, you know those all stand out. But I feel like a lot was lost on me with Stormblood because it was a lot of remixed. Final Fantasy music between Evil East and just it's I, I feel like I didn't get to appreciate Soken as much. Shadowbringers stark contrast to that. There's some references to it, but he blew it out the fucking water on on this. It's it's unbelievable how good the work was. And honestly, I think I'm a big fan of the uh of all of the themes that are our takes on the main theme, the Shadowbringers theme. And the, uh, you know, we fall, you know, the memes. So any of those would probably stand as some of my absolute favorites. But some some runners up are the Garuda primal theme. I think A Realm Reborn really knocked it out the park too with all the primal themes and all the new music that we got there. Um, Heavensward has some phenomenal tracks uh, between Dragon Song, the different themes for the different primals there. But again, there's some borrowed stuff, but you can't ever forget stuff like Sephiroth and Sophia um, and Thordin, which to this day is still one of my favorite themes. Probably my second or third favorite theme. But the Shadowbringers main theme, that even in just the last two patches that we've had so far, Shadowbringers has been a, a dominant music choice for me. So it's probably going to continue to be that way going into the future patches. Can't wait to hear what he does for Ruby Weapon. Like, what kind of music? Is it just, like, I expect the fight to start with the Final Fantasy VII, like maybe boss theme or battle theme i fully expect him to go balls to the wall and do his own stuff for the other parts of the ruby weapon fight and the other weapons as well all right next question hashtag mr happy mondays hiya love your vids hello and thank you i'm currently on a free trial of getting the game for christmas and i have a question for you of course is dancer a good job to main i'm loving its kit and watching my friend has really made me want to play it some people said it was boring but i just wanted your opinion well you're asking the opinion of someone whose main job is dancer i think in final fantasy 14 it's not a matter of if a job is a good job to main it's just kind of you play what it is you want to main and if you're good enough on it then you can do any content in the game uh i still I, there's some adjustments i'd like to be made to dancer but i love it it's it's always my job of choice for rating uh, the mobility the way the job flows i just i love it so i'm gonna go ahead and give you a good old thumbs up and say yeah Next one, hashtag Mr. Happy Monday, hashtag two questions. You got two questions in this one little paragraph. I like it. Uh, hi, Haps. You do and I, not really Final Fantasy or gaming related, but every time you post food pictures on social media, it always makes me hungry, especially the steak ones. How do you like cooking your steaks, and what's your preferred cut of beef? I've not cooked myself a steak in quite some time as much as I've contemplated it, just because it's a little on the expensive side, and I don't usually have a lot of time to cook. I am a medium rare kind of guy, and if I had to pick a specific steak to go for, it depends on the situation. I'm a good old New York strip, ever so reliable cut of meat that I was. That was once a month we got New York strips when I was uh, when I was a kid. That was the special. If not, we were doing flank steaks or cube steaks or something like that. And that was even fine for me as a kid. But when we got those New York strips, oh. That was what it was all about. When I'm out, though, if I'm not doing a New York strip, sometimes I'm splitting a tomahawk with somebody because that is an expensive cut of meat, and it is a huge cut of meat, and I just like hitting people with the bone. So, giggity. So, uh, I'm going to go with New York strip as my preferred cut of beef, unless I'm feeling extra fancy, and then I'll go with a tomahawk. Next one, hashtag Mr. Happy Mondays. Hey, Habs, I'm doing aight. You doing aight? I'm doing aight. You doing aight? I'm doing aight. We have her. We have hard versions of duties. Not for very long. Do you think we'll ever have extreme duties? I'm not sure we have... If we got, uh, extreme duties. We have extreme. You're, talking about, you're not talking about primals, then. You're talking about dungeons. 
I'm assuming. I'm not sure we've gotten fewer hard mode duties. Need yeah, you're talking about dungeons. Also, would you personally uh, enjoy extreme dungeons? So we're probably not getting any more hard mode dungeons in Final Fantasy XIV. I hate to break it to you. Um, and hard mode is not hard mode. It's just higher level mode, essentially. So kind of makes sense to worry about doing those less. It probably takes just as much resources to remodel a hard mode dungeon as it is to just make one new dungeon. So just put twice the effort into the one new dungeon. Make it twice as sexy and stop worrying about trying to rework and remake the old ones. Unless there's a good reason to go back to them, which I'm sure there is sometimes. Uh, I would like EX dungeons, but I'm also not not really stressing on ever getting them because four man harder content in four man the the way you make content harder in four man groups is very i want to say uninspired but it's very superficial i suppose you essentially are doing everything four man dungeons normally do but the amount that you have to do successfully without pun uh, before death is the punishment has to that threshold has to go down by a lot you can't do tank swaps you can't ever have something where your healer you you only have one healer for a mechanic role specific mechanics there's only four of you so there's very little rng that makes it so you have to actually react to things um at best you have harder hitting tank busters harder hitting raid wides and and an, and a, an actual enrage slash dps check and if that's all you're really doing for me, that's not, like, a very engaging experience compared to what we have now. Where I, I mean, it's I guess it's better than rolling through them. I'm also worried about reward structure for it, because you can't just make it worth more tomes. You can't. It just doesn't work. You also can't make it more valuable than, like, 24-man raids, because that's weird. Unless it has a weekly lockout, I suppose, but... And then it's a matter of how does it compare to the 24-man's damage-wise and all that, so... It's, it's something I would like on paper... But the way the game structure works, I don't know if it makes sense. That's that's the tough thing about it. Next one, hashtag Mr. Happy Mondays, hashtag only one question. Hey, Haps, hope the holidays receive you well. And I, you, my friend, have a gift of a free point on the next areas of you. That won't save me, but I appreciate it. Something that's come up in my free company is there are tanks that pull with provoke and tanks that pull with an opener. Question to your knowledge, is it better to provoke as an opener or just flow? Provoke should not be your first skill on a mob. Provoke takes whoever the highest level aggro is and adds just a bit of aggro on top of that. Now, they've buffed it in recent times, so it's, it used to literally be a single point of aggro. For reference, I think using any skill, even if it doesn't target something, generates 70 aggro. So that's how inefficient it used to be. But even though it generates more now to make tank swaps better, it's still based on the person's enmity. And if your enmity is zero you're not generating a whole lot of enmity. So provoke pulling is something you generally only do in set scenarios, maybe to grab a mob that's really far away. That is an acceptable use for it. Um, or to tank swap. You know, it's just not something you A, use regularly. Like you don't just use provoke on cooldown. Don't do that. And B, it's not something you should be pulling with on like bosses and stuff. It's just, it's it has its uses, but those aren't it. All right, I was just answering a bunch of questions, and I didn't... So, last week, or last two weeks, we haven't had, like, a crazy amount of questions, so I asked for more questions this week. Now there's too many. <laughs> so, um, this is actually going to be the last question I take, because uh, it's been, like, 45 minutes almost, and I have not eaten dinner. And orange juice, believe it or not, not dinner. So, I'm going to take this as the last question, and that's going to be a wrap for that one. I did see some other questions I, like, skipped over because I didn't have good answers for them. But uh, I haven't read this one yet, so let's see what it is. Hashtag Mr. Happy Mondays. Hi, hi. Hello. Try not to get stuck with that cold shoulder. Yeah, I'm trying not to get sick. Didn't work, as you can see. Even though winter's coming around the corner. Having said that, have the rest of your week is incredibly cool and chill. Bad, bad pun fun. Yeah, you say it. The next line. Uh, do you think it might be possible they could eventually put in customizable limit breaks for each character? I'm gonna. I, I, I see you're about to present ideas. The answer is no. The whole point of limit breaks is to not be something that is a hundred percent needed in every fight, unless they specifically design something to require a limit break. Meaning it's a it's a test of how you handle things up to that point. Um, they're never going to do personal limit breaks. I, in fact, you might get personal limit breaks for Blue Mage. That's the only job I'm thinking might get them. Diamondback practically is a personal limit break because it is even more damage reduction than the tank LB3. But otherwise, uh, no. 
I, I, they, they won't. The, the limit that it's essentially a personal limit break is the same thing as a skill that has like a five, seven minute cooldown. It's, it would be literally the same thing. It's like hallowed ground is technically you could quantify it as a personal limit break. Uh, any sort of like benediction that could be quantified as a personal limit break. Um, there's to customize them. I'm, I'm sorry, but it's just, it's not going to happen. They're not going to, the, the big thing is that when something's customizable in an MMO, it's only feigning giving you a choice. You still realistically don't have a choice most of the time. You're either going to take the thing that is mathematically the best thing to take. And yes, maybe sometimes there's one situation where you have that one and one situation you have this one. But all that changes is you clicking a button to change which one you have. And so what ultimately ends up happening is it's the same every time you do something. There's not like a... a, like a this reactionary adjustment that you're going to be making that involves you more directly involves your gameplay that's true of things like talent trees and and again in mmos and single player games or even in like isolated online games like path of exile where you don't have to choose to play with other people and your gameplay doesn't have to impact somebody else's um but in mmos where it's very much about a team formula uh it throws all sorts of monkey wrenches into it so anything that resembles that will probably never happen but anyway that is going to be the last question for this episode of mondays with mr happy i've still got six o'clock i gotta eat and i still have so much work to do i'm so behind on my blue mage videos because of the sheer number of hours and sickness that i've had from the last several uh from the last week or so a little bit longer than that but you know what i'm saying Anyway, thank you for watching this episode of Mondays with Mr. Happy. If you have a question, be sure to ask it under next week's episode. And thank you to everyone who asked the question, even if I didn't get to it this week. It meant that I had plenty of videos, or plenty of questions to go through for this video. Be sure to like, favorite, subscribe, and share. Thank you again to our patrons, and I'll see you all next week for the next episode of Mondays with Mr. Happy. Thanks for watching, and until then, take care.